the walker. Bring the train out from 16, try. writers because that's what they do they write their names among other things everywhere names they've been given or have chosen for themselves most of all they write in and on subway trains which carry their names from one end of the city to the other it's called bombing and it has equally assertive counterparts in rap music and break dancing Graffiti writing in New York is a vocation. Its traditions are handed down from one youthful generation to the next. To some, it's art. To most people, however, it is a plague that never ends. A symbol that we've lost control. I'm Detective Bernie Jacobs. I, in conjunction with my partner, Detective Jim McHugh, are the crime prevention coordinators for the New York City Transit Police Department. Graffiti, as the name itself, is not an art. Graffiti is the application of a medium to a surface. I will show you graffiti, such as the letters on the end of that car directly in back of me. Is that an art form? I don't know, I'm not an art cr critic. But I can sure as hell tell you that that's a crime. At the Grand Concourse, 149th Street Station in the Bronx, graffiti writers gather at what they call the writer's bench. They're saying that the kids run the subways, that the system is out of control, that 15 and 16 year old kids are running the system, and that graffiti is a symbol of that. No, I ain't running the system. Hell yeah. I'm bombing the system. <laughs> They're trying to make it look like graffiti riders break windows and everything. It ain't even like that. Yeah, you know who be doing that, man? Niggas who be high when they come from school right. are the ones who break the windows. And it's in the graffiti artist's favor to be as cool, calm, and collected about putting his art on the train as he can. You know, he wants to get in and get out without even being noticed, except for the work that's going to come out to the public, the, you know, that Monday. Yeah, we gotta start to rock some straight letters. This one came out alright, right? That's, you know, yeah, that's the first, that's about the third scheme piece I did this shit. And that's the TikTok I did in Gun Hill. What'd you do last night? We did um, two whole cars. It was me, Dez, and me three, right? And on the first car, in small letters, it said, all you see is, and then, you know, big, big, you know, block silver letters that said crime in the city, right? It just took up the whole yeah, car. Yeah, it, it was a whole car and shit. Then it was a, you know, a scroll like, you no know, one of those scrolls. Then on the next car, it was a scheme and had, you know, a cop character and shit, you know, a police nigga yeah. with, with a stick, you know, in a badge. What, what decide you put around the Society car? Society should go down in the subway and lock them all up because they don't have any business down there. It is dangerous down there. People that work down there 25 and 30 years 
have accidents. But his contention is that he's immortal, I guess, like most 17-year-olds are immortal, right? Well, it's a matter of getting a tag on each line and each division. You know, you go, it's called going all city. People see your tags in Queens, uptown, downtown, all over. <laughs> I can only, I really, I can only laugh to keep from crying because what happens is that he really, I, I don't really think he, he knows how silly that sounds. He's going all city. I mean, to what end? And when I ask him, he says to me, well, just so people see it and they know who I am. Nobody knows who he is, and so they see it, and so No, what? it's not a matter of so they know who I am. So they see it, and then after they see it, so what? It's a matter of bombing, knowing that I can do it, you know? Every time I get in the train, almost every day I see my name, I say, yeah, you know what, I was there, I bombed it. It's a matter, it's for me, it's not for nobody else to see. I don't care, <laughs> I don't care about nobody else seeing it, or the fact if they can read it or not. It's for me and other graffiti writers that we can read it. All these other people who don't write, they're excluded. I don't care about them. You know, they don't matter to me. It's for us. CC starboard bow. Slow it down. Slow it down. What is it? You tell me. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. In the 1970s, New York graffiti rapping and breaking became the prime expressions of a new young people subculture called hip hop. Graffiti is the written word, there's the spoken word of rap music, and then there's the acrobatic body language of dances like breaking. It started in the Bronx and part of Harlem. It started in Freeze's house. Oh, shut up! His mom used to break. She's a whole lot in his mom. Let me talk about my mother now. Well, yeah, Billy, go, go, go. Mom used to spin on her head by her mother. Why you acting stupid now? Break is when you don't have nothing to do and, you know, everybody just stand around getting high. Just for you. You make up your own freezes. You got names. And you call them, you got names for them. Like what? Like the baby. Chair. A dead freeze like oh, this. Well, that's one of the old, old, ancient. It ain't one of the old, because I, <laughs> I was the first one to do it. How ancient can you get? The one when you go like this? It's called the hump. It's called the, the hump. Man, the headache works. No, that's the headache. That's the headache. And the other one is the hump. When you got a headache. No, you can, you can be when you got a headache, body. when you got a headache, you go like that, you know. When you hump, you go like that. <laughs> This is the transit system. They don't like it to be defaced. And they will at times try and uh, go to the extreme and try and apprehend you. The subway system is a very old one. And I've personally explored some tunnels and I've found rooms where maps that were so old it might have been like the first train line that New York City had. Call it what you want. Just a lot of rock, a lot of steel, tomb, dungeon, under, under the city. A lot of trains, a lot of fun, a lot of art. Art that's going to be a part of 
New York City's history forever. Oh, wow, check it out, our whole car lit. Yo, what? Check it out, man, the sad yeah. quick. Yo! Yeah. Oh, look at that, man. Yeah. That's great. Oh. A lot of riders have been down here, you can tell. Graffiti all over the place. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Years ago, it was pretty much a secret. It was secretly done. People wondered and wished they could do it. Not most people do it. When all the toys are like home sleeping, cuddling to their pillows, they usually have curfews. Come down in the wee hours of the night after the work has done their job, the sweepers did the sweeping they had to do. Just take my time and be creative. I think it's something you can never really capture again once you experience it. You have like live third rails and like crazy cops who, who come and chase you out. Even the smell you get, like when you first smell trains, like in a yard, is like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good smell to like a dedicated graffiti writer, I guess. When you're first against the train, it's like, everything seems so big, like, wow. It's like you're in a yard of like metal giants and like, it's just like, I mean, everything is like so hard and like so steel and like, you're just there, you're like a little dude. You're like in the midst of all this metal and like, you're here to produce something, you know? Well, you're here to like, try to produce something. Well, I've seen comparable uh, graffiti. Not necessarily these particular ones. Each of these cost us a million dollars, in a sense, because uh, others went out and uh, tried to uh, copy. Isn't worth it. Well, it is one of the quality of life offenses, and uh, you can't just take one of those quality of life offenses. It's like uh, three card Monte and uh, pickpocketing and uh, shoplifting and uh, uh, graffiti defacing our uh, public and private walls. Uh, they're all in the same uh, area of uh, destroying our uh, lifestyle and making it uh, difficult to enjoy uh, life. And I think uh, has to be responded to and so i've told you uh, that the response that i think a repeater three-time repeater should get would be five days in jail now obviously a murderer you if you believe in the death penalty as i do you want to have the option of executing a murderer you wouldn't do that to a graffiti writer they saw you at work over here i just want to find out what you're filming well, we're making point. a film on subway graffiti in new york so why did you take uh, this particular neighborhood here? What's uh, unusual? Is there more graffiti here than other places? I hope not. We're here because one of the one of the best graffiti writers lives around here. Writes scene. What is it? S E E N. That's his name. Yes, that's what he wrote. Or writes. is it a that's nom de plume? It's a, it's a nom de plume. You wouldn't tell me he's a real man. No. Why not? Would he be in getting trouble or wouldn't he be glorified by it? Oh, I'm the type of guy who will never settle down. Where pretty girls are, well, you know that I'm around. I kiss them and I love them, cause to me they're all the same. I hug them and I squeeze them, they don't even know my name. Yeah, I'm a wanderer. Yeah, I'm a wanderer. numerous reasons why I ain't paint right now. To make a long story short, I'm on what they call a six-month probation. They call it a six-month vacation, never mind probation. Now they got a graffiti squad on this line, which there really was never really. Since they come on the line, it's been harder to piece, and it, it ain't like the old days when a train used to pull into the yard on a Friday night. That train wouldn't pull out until Monday morning. Now when you go to piece of train, you put an outline on the train and you can say goodbye. The train pulls out 10 minutes later. 
Or if you're ready to put an outline, you gotta chase the train halfway down the track to put an outline on the piece. It just ain't the same anymore. They don't know what they're doing no more. Late, as usual. But I'm here, I show up though. I show up, let me see. Well, why don't you do this one, this one, on that side of the wall, you know what I'm saying? No, this one, I, we want, we got our plane room, believe me. The bottom of the piece? The bottom of the piece, I say about here. All right, the United States is going to go a little bit below the top, because we're going to have it on a wave. No, it's going to yeah. be big delays. So I want you to start from about here. All right, maybe even here. Start it from here. Listen to me, from here. You understand what I'm saying here? I still think it's too big. Now, your first outline is needed. Always needed. This way you know what you're filling in. No matter how good you are, you can't just go in and just start filling in in the air. You gotta have your first outline. Once your first outline is done, then you're filling. That takes away your first outline, meaning you don't need your first no more because now you got your filling. From your filling, you put your colors and then your 3D. And if you want background, you put your cloud or whatever. How's this, nigga? I'm throwing a few connections here. I want to make it look like yours. What do you think? I'll make a few bits. All right. Huh? Bits, bits. I don't know, little doodads here and there. Yeah, that, now it's shaping up. I have about 100 outlines, but I'll shape it up. Nikki, Nikki, come on. You gonna save me room or what? I didn't do that to yours. Get out of there. He's ah, making a mess in this house. He cannot sit down without, you know, doing graffiti or something. All right, when you really can't. When you're talking on the phone, and you're talking on the phone, you don't doodle on the paper? I don't doodle. Yes, you do. I do not doodle. You do doodle on the paper. I don't doodle. I don't doodle. Know. I just write my name while I'm talking on the phone. What's that? It just, Bessel, you're I'm just me, writing something. You're telling me that you write your name while you're talking on the phone. In the meantime, you have destroyed your room. You have destroyed your room. Testing out my you paint. You have no respect for anything. Don't tell me about testing out your paint. You have no respect for anything anymore. Ain't we putting red, yellow, and up, red, orange, and yellow in the air? No, the browns gotta be brown. I ain't putting no browns there. Ain't no way. Red, orange, and yellow. You want it to and stand out. Top, Boom. Top, the top. whole thing around the whole works. Red, orange, and yellow. Remember how I did the mad scene with the wall and the color went all around the thing? The mad scene went on the fives. With the walls were falling down, the one I did it myself. No. All right, let me explain. Yellow. Orange and a little bit of red, no, yellow and orange around the whole thing, and then we'll put browns and beiges in the 3D. Believe me, I'll show you. Not around the face, fade into the yellow, but a trim of red, a cheap trim. I'll show you after. I'll show you after. All right? I'll never steer you wrong, Nick. Rustoleum, Krylon, wet look, epoxy, red devil. When you hold a can of Rustoleum in your hand, it's like holding three other shit brands in your hand. It lasts, it covers, and it's not air, so like cryo, it just comes out in the mist, it just comes out like paint. The schools uh, have uh, courses in art. How about the mothers and fathers uh, of this uh, city saying to the kids, that's the wrong thing to do? You listen to them talk, they sound absolutely ridiculous. He's the king of the yakety yak yard. Uh, who died and left him king of any yard? He owns nothing in the subway, you know? <laughs> I love robbing paint. I know, you know, everybody knows how you rob it. And like, he gets me souped up and sometimes I'll go and get 15 cans at a time, you know, stuffing it in your coat, in your shirt, down the back of your pants. It's mainly with a big coat and like 15 cans, you figure it out, it's like over $50. You're going into stores, like I, we could go one day and get 100 cans at a time. It's easy, for me anyway. It's, you know, harder on black kids or Spanish kids. Because, like, everybody thinks a graffiti writer is black and Puerto Rican, and that's like, you know, uh, it's wrong, you know. A lot of white people are writing. What you've got is uh, a whole miserable subculture. I was raised on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I went to a sort of strict prep school in the Bronx, right, Riverdale Country School. In attending that school, I had to walk past the one yard on 242nd Street every day. 
from where I stood, I'd watch the trains pull in and out. I thought, how could a human being have his name on every car? You know, that these guys must either live in there, be allowed to live in there, or just be, like, allowed to, you know, go off like that, right? They're trespassing it. They're beating the system. They're getting their names up, right? We've drenched the city with our names, right? We're trying our damnedest. Freshly painted double R, and we spent about three hours in it. That's impossible. No, it's not. We, we were tagging with the unis, then the minis, then the Marvies, then the pilots, then the flow pens, and we were doing clouds around the tags and 3Ds on the tags. We just, for the double R's to have a clean car back then like that, it was, we just had an orgasm. 1970. The idea of getting your name up, not just in your neighborhood, but everywhere, was invented by a kid named Taki, who lived on 183rd Street in Washington Heights. Taki 183. As soon as everybody understood that it was a name, they realized that Taki was famous. Taki 183 was the first guy, even though they say Julio Teofor started before him, but he was one that made it famous. Then after him, in them times, was Papa 184, then came up Junior 161. K-161, they, they were bombing too. Stitch came out around 1971, he was all 32. Barbara, Eva, 62, they were girls. Everybody was right. Oh, that was what everybody was talking in them days. I got into graffiti just like riding the trains when I was younger, you know, looking at, you know, old writers shit, you know. Like a lot of new writers around, like they, you know, you talk to them about a lot of old writers, see, they don't even know what you're talking about. I started in 1973 or 4 uh, during very uh, early years of uh, initial bombing, very important years of graffiti bombing because if it wasn't for those years, I don't think we would get where we are today. That was the life back then. That was, that was happening. Everybody was pioneering back then. That's when all your developing happened, your bubble letters, all that kind of stuff, your, your wild styles. <laughs> Wild yeah, you, you don't have to do straight letters to have style. Anything that comes in your imagination adds on to your own individual style. The arrow. Everybody's got their own arrow. I like that though. Various arrows. Some guys have on the letter arrow. That was like connection. Some people had different arrows just going right through their pieces. The funk is here, so you can move. We want to make your body move. Bum, 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 yeah. Colors, designs, style, technical, just get loose. Get, get loose. loose. Cartoons, mm. everything. And when they see you got a vicious style, they be wanting to get loose about it, you know, and that's what keep it that going. Sparks graffiti right, yeah, yeah, keep yeah, sparking it. You know, I know a lot of good writers, you know, and all the writers that I knew, you know, they used to get up, so they used to tell me, your trap, won't you get up? And I started getting up with them, and we started doing pieces. Then I met Dez, you know, and then... One day, you know, I came to the bench, and I seen them sitting there looking at the pieces. You could tell a rider, you know, like you go to the bench and you see him as the trains go by, he'll be going like this, 
You know, he have ink stains on his clothes. He gave me outlines and stuff like that to practice. I can't let him go for at least five minutes. You know, he'll destroy the piece. <laughs> you know, I, I turn around, chat, what you doing? You know, I want to do my own piece. I said, yeah, but you know, follow the outline. Rush, rush. What's up, man? Oh, you know, I'm chilling, man. Slag Rex, Slag Rex, and the Asian Bay. For about two and a half years, I was upstate. From like beginning of 1970 to 72. What's up? Yeah, what's up? When I came home, I ain't know nothing about no white, no graffiti, cause I wasn't about it. All right, all right, you know it. So when I got home, I seen writing on the train. I said, what's this stuff here, you know? Those niggas doing their names big. I said, let me do one at least, you know, cause I was, you know, down with art already. And I did me a piece. Just, you know, for people in general to get to know who I am. I said, ooh, that look all right. Well, I'm gonna go every Sunday now. Next thing I know, I started getting better and better. And as I realized I knew to get better, I said, oh man, I'm going to bring out the computer rock. And then that's when I really got loose, because then niggas are saying, yo, who's that guy? Then one day, these news reported people was on the train station. They, we was going by and we seen them. We seen them filming our whole car. We went up to them and I remember I said, yo, who you think probably done that right there? You know, just to be curious to see what they say. And he said, I don't know, but whoever done it, that's some remarkable talent, you know? I ain't never seen nothing like this before. I said, if I told you I did it, would you believe me? He said, I don't know, I can't say, but I believe so, because you don't never know what you can believe these days. So I said, well, I did. And then he said, I don't believe that, you only got one arm. I said, that don't mean nothing. I do things that people don't realize I can do with this, but you know, being that I'm like this, you know? And then he said, I hear you then, Sonny. And then I said, well, I ain't no Sonny now. I just was asking a question, so you know, so that's all I wanted to know, to see how your feelings was about it. Do you want to dance? What's up? Get some candy? Huh? Ain't getting nothing? Straight up. Get some candy, man. You ain't got no chance? Oh. Hey, Jiggle out. What you know? Jiggle out. Where that nigga at, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can dig it. We going on the other side, right? Word. Oh, Yo, what up? What up? What up? Check it out. What up? The Beast Master. Do you right. want to swing? Right look. Are you yeah. willing to take a chance? Ha, 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 ha. Instead of that eye, just Yeah, up. word. Look at that eagle. No, word. I said, look at the eye. It's like his eye. <laughs> know where he got that from, right? Von Golden Who? Frank yeah. Rosetta. Got the Beast Master. The way the letters is breaking up. The epic up. adventures of a new kind of hero. That's what we're going to be. The fresh extraterrestrial brothers. You know what I'm saying? As to less, knowing we're the best, you know what I'm saying? It's a Desi Des in a Casey case, a D5. We gonna rock the place. And if you're based in the place, you will get disgraced because we are the crew. We, we got, got the play. Rock, sock it, rock, rock it in the pocket. A sock, sock it, rock, rock in, in the pocket. pocket. Say, what that you know? girl front of the train. Took it to the doctor, so I'm on again. Stabbed that man right in his heart. Gave him a transfer for a brand new star. Can't cut through the park. Cause it's crazy after dark. Keep my hand on my gun, cause they got me on the run. I feel like an outlaw. Broke my last glass jaw. Hear them say, You want some more? Living on a seesaw. <laughs> Glass everywhere, people pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. I can't take the smell, can't take the noise, got no money to move out, I guess I got no choice. Rats in the front room, roaches in the back, junkies in the alley with the baseball bat. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far, cause a man with the touch of repossessed my car. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> I know one thing about graffiti, man. 
Niggas say it played out, niggas say this, niggas say that. But it's gonna keep going on, you know? Cause look, I might be old and quit, you know, but you coming up, younger niggas is coming up, it's gonna keep going and keep going, you know? So you gonna be a king soon too, you know? He's like a son to me in a way, you know. I look out for him, he looks out for me. You know, I won't let nothing happen to him, you know. You know, he won't let nothing happen to me if he could help it, you know. <laughs> but I know from his age, he's 14 now, you know, and I'm 16. By the time he get my age, he'll be like one of the best people out, you know. And if he continues to go on in the years, he could be another Picasso. <laughs> Get funky in the place. Get funky in the place. Life ain't no more joke, it's a serious thing. When you're dealing with the answer, tell me, can't explain. It's the funky beat, and it's the funky beat, and it's the funk, the funk, and it's the funky beat. Yeah. Like a little jelly bean, I'm a sweet like a candy cane I'll make you get down, this is number one stain on the train Just moving like a sage jar, just breaking up, yeah, yeah The idea of style and competing for the best style is the key to all forms of rocking. For the rap MC, it's rocking the mic. For the b-boys, it's rocking your body and breakdancing. Or for writers, rocking the city with your name on a train. Get funky in the place. Get funky in the place. Right now he's doing the, the footwork with um, the original breaking came out. Yeah, he's doing the baby and the turtle. The back bridge. Yeah, did the head spin and then just went up. I got a certain backspin that I made up. Want me to show you it? I started off doing like this. I landed like that. All right. So then I just decided not to do the freeze and keep on spinning. So it goes like this. I put my arm right here. And it's easy, and I push with my arm and swing my left leg to my, my right leg. Both of them around. Bring your leg. Other crews, they're not as good as us, you know, because we have the breaking form, you know, the original break, style. Yeah, original Both style, you know. Original. Other, other crews like Dynamic Rockers, you know, they bite. Yeah, they're they not as, bite. They, they, let me they, tell they, you about these people. Dynamic Rockers. This goes back when I used to go out to the road scene, the United States of America and Queens, right? I used to go over there to break against all of them and take them all out, you know, burn them, make them look stupid. And, you know, they had no kind of style at all. They was beginners. And I've been breaking way before them. We started doing better routines than they were. They got to a point where they got mad at us because we was taking them out with our moves. And, and then that started getting out of hand because they had the crowd and we didn't. Yo, whoever ain't in rock steady or dynamic, get behind the barriers. Yo, both rock and crews, can you please listen? Yo, nobody's listening to me. We're not going to start until you move. Rockers, get ready. Yeah. Yeah. Upright, it's just like humiliating, you know, doing things in people's face and all that. And down rocking is, you know, trying to see who can compete against whose moves on the floor. I was looking at a winner on the 33rd floor. All of a sudden, there was a knock on my door. He was sort of saying, I'm with a 44. Then it blew a hole straight through my door. So I went to the back to get the gun. I was out two bullets had only one. I shoot the shit. Yeah, shot him in his eye. Never saw a white man jump so high. 
So who won? Who won the rocking contest? Y'all all know we took them out, right? Put it this way: we're out of sight, and they bite you. They bit. They bit my turtle into a hot. Oh Niggas is biting man! To I could have cried when I seen it. You know that faggot that was hey, yo, flying man, around there yeah, yeah. with his funny legs and shit? Yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo, man. He's in gymnastics. He's got to be in gymnastics. So what? So what? That's not even breaking, man. That's all fairy flying. I call that fairy like, flying. Yeah. So fairy. Who goes for rock steady? Park train and you just oh you mean you go to the you go to the train yeah like yard. the layup or the train yard uh, does think, your mother so. wonder why you come home with that all over your face <laughs> no she knows I write the graffiti I, I told her I said I'm going up on the train so I'm gonna go write some graffiti yeah she says if uh if cops call don't come running to me <laughs> um I I never realized they they it meant so much to them you know I just thought they were writing just writing anything but I guess it has a deep meaning. Huh? Um, well, like he said, uh, he's writing his girlfriend's names and he's dust, whatever that means. <laughs> what is dust supposed no, to mean? It's just a name, it's a word, you know. I, I, see, it's a game. It's like they give you a name and they say, here, take this name and do something with it. Like he got the name Scene, he can walk around and just say, hey, my name is Scene. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, I see you out there, I see you there. It's a name. It's just like I'll give you a name and you say, hey, how big could you get this name up? How high? Trains are routinely washed. But because of the graffiti problem, we have to use a graffiti removal solution, which at best is detrimental to the physical makeup of the train itself. This is what I'm assigned. The car wash. 8 a.m. to make the yard. Hold your nose. We spend a lot of money replacing broken and damaged side windows. We cannot use acrylic plastic windows in the train because the same graffiti removal solution fogs the windows. The problem often is that often it doesn't produce a sparkling clean car, but rather a uh, sort, of, sort of vomitous color, uh, which is... is uh, some of the graffiti artists argue less attractive than what they consider to be their artwork. So it's altogether sort of an unsatisfactory result. Watch out, you might get wet. Watch your shoes. It's not the best smelling stuff. But so far it hasn't hurt. You know, it hasn't uh, bothered me. Some fellas are bothered. <laughs> That's my money that's being diverted from providing me with good, safe, secure, rapid transit. Look at this, Chuck. Graffiti doesn't make your life better. It just makes your neighborhood look worse. You know how I made something out of my life? By using my hands. But only in the rain. Don't use them to mess up the walls with graffiti. I practice all my life to make moves like that. And I worked every day to be a singer. So if you really want to make something out of your life, use your head. Or your voice. But don't waste your time making a mess. Make your mark in society, not on society. This happens to be a poster that is uh, the first in a series that's going to be used in New York City subways and buses, where we've used Hector Camacho, who's a boxer, North American lightweight champ, and Alex Ramos, boxer, leading middleweight contender. Take it from the champs. Graffiti is for chumps. Make your mark in society, not on society. It's really very clever. 
put your mark on society in, uh, in uh, doing something in society. I've screwed it up a little bit, but nevertheless, you got the message. Realistically, you think it can work? Well, you say realistically. I'm hopeful that it will uh, work. Nobody uh, thought that we would be as successful as we were in the uh, campaign against the drought and water conservation. Nevertheless, if that worked, I'm hopeful we will have equal success here. Time will tell. Mr. Mayor, are those posters graffiti proof? Time will tell. What you doing, B? Fresh? Yeah, it's fresh. one of my little signature series guns. Word. No, it's not. You getting fresh on a nigga, man. That nigga still got the touch, boy. Butch oh, and Butch with the, the tiger skin. I see you did the case with the seats this time. Yeah, well, you know who I am, though, anyway. You know the king of what? King of style. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work. <laughs> See, this is just semi like what I would call it. But if I really get into it and start camouflaging it, I don't think you even be able to read it. Don't go nowhere. Little, little semi thing here. Yeah. It wasn't no severely bad accident, it's just that I got burnt by wires, that's all. A long time ago, electrical wires, and then they rushed me to the hospital and they just had to amputate. Because my tissues and muscles was burnt bad. You know, I was young, I was playing, and I, I wasn't you know, too sure on what I was... I knew what I was doing, but I just didn't know not should I grab a wire or not. And I don't know if I grabbed it or not, but I know I just, you know, got hurt. Cause it didn't knock me out, so I didn't remember, you know. But it don't mean nothing in general. I mean, I'm okay. It's just that it was a bad thing to happen at the time, you know. But you that's why people's amazed about me now, cause of going through that and then dealing with what I'm dealing with, even though it's common little bull crap in a way, you know. People look at a person, and, what you ran on trains, or you vandalism and all that. Yeah, I'm vandalism, all right, but still in general, I know what I'm doing. I did something to make your eyes open up, right? So why is you talking about it for, you know? This is a beautiful spot to do pieces on. And ain't hardly no riders know about this place. My spot. Niggas know, believe it. Niggas know. <laughs> Yo, here, take the cans. I am not a graffiti artist. I am a graffiti bomber. It's just two styles of graffiti that are trying to, you know, coexist with each other, but it ain't gonna work like that. Blood wars, buddy. Blood wars. That's why graffiti's ruined. Like, Cap ruined the twos and fives. The twos and fives used to go to the two yard. It would be like a masterpiece art gallery of burners from all these dudes from the Bronx and Brooklyn with deaf wild styles. Now you go to the two yard, it's, it's all destroyed. This guy named Cap with his Lucille Ball hairdo. <laughs> all your burners. <laughs> What's up, Sal? Yo, what's up, man? I've seen your new pieces, man, on the two and the five. Yeah. Cap. Like, they went over that, that shine, man. Yeah, I know. Cap. Cap. I wouldn't mind if you would have went over one of my old cars, you know, but I was fresh. It was a brand new burner. It only ran for two days, you know? He didn't even get a chance. He didn't even get a chance to run on the line, just like, Not even you know, and they went over, and I feel, you know, that hurt me, you know. And Seen was with him, and PJ. And then I called Seen up, and he denied it. I can't afford to get involved. There's a war going on, as you should know. PJ and Cap, against everybody. You just crossed me out anyway, so I don't know why, but brand new car, too, he wasted. Let's say this. 
I stand behind them if they had a good cause for the situation. As far as it is now, they have no cause behind it. They're just doing it for the hell of it, which that ain't me because I wouldn't want people to go over my pieces so I wouldn't go over them. He's disrespecting the line, which no other guy was doing that years ago. All he does is silver throws. You got fresh colored pieces full of top of No, you can't get him back. You can't make can't up for it. And he'll just laugh at you. It's just a throw up. I got a million of them yeah. running, so what? He's a jealous toy, that's all, because he, all there is he too, can't do bro. a burner and shit. Yeah. He can't do shit. He can't even do a straight letter. Yeah. Yeah. He went over this? Yup, he did a, a cap throw up over me and an NPC over this and wrote war next to Fat Albert. Oh, shit. You, get him, man. you, you can't gotta, never make up for that. You gotta get that nigga on the that, that's, that's never permanent. forgive action. If you a toy, it gotta be stopped. And this guy's a toy and he's big and he still gotta be stopped. He gotta be stopped. You gotta break Yo, but how come we waited all this long? How come there's so many writers that he went over there burners and we're not in his neighborhood with crews. Because nobody wants to get united. That's shit. That's we gotta it. get Everybody together, bro. Shit. Everybody says, yeah, we're gonna get down. We're gonna get down, right? But nobody comes, man. Yeah. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. It's like Grand Concourse. We should forget all the other bullshit worries that we got with each other. Yeah. Unite and get this toy, because he's yeah. dogging everybody. everybody. I don't know, some big white boy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. Yeah, that's what he's doing, trying to get attention and revenge because people go over his throw ups. You know, people do burners. You see a throw up, you're going to go over it. Who thinks Cap's throw ups are worth being on a train? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. What'd you write, bro? All right, Mayor, man. Mayor. Mayor? Yeah. M E A R? M A R E. M A R E. Yeah. Ma. Man. <laughs> man, I'm more at MAR. But nah, seriously, you know, you gotta kill them dudes for doing that, you know. Who's Cap? Cap, Cap is right here? Uh, oh, that's oh, right. Oh, no, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Cap. Cap is right here. People don't know what I look like until now. Until they start going to the movies, they're gonna see my face. Big deal. Anybody tries to screw around with me and my friends, I go over everything they got forever. Everybody from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Everybody. And that's the way it is. Especially with, especially with me, the object is more. Not the biggest and the beautifulest, but more. It's like a little piece on every car is what counts. Not one whole car on every 30 cars that goes by. Once you start going over someone, you can't stop. So I'm gonna live. Thus, started pulling some shit with me. And I'm telling you, he's lucky you didn't catch him by that wall. Because if we would have been, even if you were shooting the movie, it would have just been boom, boom, boom. And that's the way it would have went. He's gonna get crossed off, I guarantee by tomorrow, once they find out it's here. Help me with the 3D, Nikki. come on. The piece has got a lot of colors to go in there yet. But with the color, we can do that, we can do that with no problem. I can do it before it gets dark, no problem. Colors, colors, colors! Colors! But that's, that was a beautiful wall. I really like that. People like that, they deserve getting everything they got crossed out forever. For the past 20 years, there really hasn't been anything hot. There have been no movements since pop art. Uh, any retailer, and let's face it, a gallery is indeed a retailer. They're always looking for something hot that they can merchandise and, and sell to the public. It's almost as though um, these pieces were peeled off the train and put onto canvas. So you have the same energy, you have the same coloring, you have the same intensity and the same big piece that you would see on a train. The real subway graffiti that's done on, you know, on the trains is slowly dying out, and this is taking its place. The lifespan of, a, of an average piece today only lasts a few months. This is something that could last a lifetime. 
Blondie seems to be an important figure within the uh, graffiti art style. Kane uh, has used her in a very photographic way. Nock uh, shows her expressionistically. I'm a colorist myself, I'm an artist. And it's exciting, the color is exciting, the movement is exciting, it combines all kinds of movement. We had uh, ABC TV, we had CBS here tonight. You know, we're gonna be on the news tonight at right. 11 o'clock. Uh, National Public Radio. Uh... Do it up, baby. I love it. I'm Ron Powers, I'm a, I'm a reporter with the Associated 